Okay, well, we've already showed you how to graph uh, this function we had from number 10 in Desmos, but I'm going to show you uh, one other thing you can do with graphing, and I'm going to do number 12. We're first going to color code it, and then I'm going to show you how you can avoid the color coding and get it all together. So if I want to do um, number 12, I could erase everything I have from number 10, or I might want to use some of that syntax. So what you can do is you can just kind of edit what you previously have. So for example, instead of retyping this entirely, I could exit out and retype it. Or I could just say, oh, I would like instead of x is less than 0, I would like to be x is less than negative 2. And then my rule changes to 2x. And that takes care of the first line I have over here. Um, takes care of the first line there of my function. Then um, my next line, it's going to change the syntax a little bit. I have, uh, it's going to be a little bit different. So I'm going to go ahead and just um, type it in it's brand new since it's different. It'd be a good thing to review. Y equals open your curly brace. And then my domain restriction this time is from negative 2 is less than or equal to x. And then it's a less than 2. Get your colon, and once again, I can get on the keypad with the alpha and shift to get it if you're using a mobile device, and then two, and then put the rule after it. And that gives you this graph in the middle. That gives you the graph in the middle. And then the bottom graph is a lot like what I have here. And you're like, well, I'd like the graph in the middle to be in the middle. Well, you can just drag it and put it in the middle so it matches. And then this one's a lot like what you have, but I'm going to need a greater than or equal to instead of a greater than. And that's going to be a 2. And then my rule there is not a 4. My rule is a negative 2. Now, this gets them graphed. And you notice it does disappear at some of these lines. What you can do is just make sure it's showing the little um, over here where my uh, cursor is. Make sure it's giving you those little symbols to let you know the graph is uh, there. If you do something wrong, it's going to, uh, well, I'll have to break it. If I do something, you know, weird, on a graph, you can say, hey, that's not a function. It's uh, overlapping. The green and blue shouldn't be overlapping. That's a sign that you did something that needs to be fixed up. You can't see the whole graph. You can use this minus to zoom out. And a lot of times, your initial zoom in Desmos is a little small. But anyway, that gives you the same thing you have. And notice I could go ahead and uh, draw it there. It is important to consider that if I were to do it, uh, that this uh, first piece has an open circle there. Let's see if I can draw that. I don't think it's going to let me. No, it's not, unfortunately. But I would have an open circle for my first piece. I would have a closed circle on one end and an open on the other end for the green piece in the middle. And then the blue would have a closed circle. So the red would end with an open, a closed and an open, and then a closed for that one if I drew it there. Uh, for sake of time, though, we're not going to do that. We're going to just look at how we can combine those together in a single graph. What I can actually do is I can put them all in one graph by, I'm just going to do some copying and pasting so I don't have to retype it. I can put a comma, and that will allow me to have multiple rules. So I can just take what I have in the first one. I'm going to paste in what I have in the second one. And then I'm going to put a comma, and I'm going to go ahead and do my third rule. The advantage to doing this is it will, if you are wanting to make a table, uh, if you're wanting to evaluate a function, that's a lot better way to have it. To evaluate a function, though, I won't be able to do a y equals. I'll have to change that to an f of x as well. But if I have f of x equals and this all rolled into 1, it took a little extra time. But it does have the advantage that everything is just in one piece. And I can turn off these other graphs by clicking them. And the only thing that's going to show up is the purple. And you can see it's the same thing that we had, just not color-coded. The advantage, though, for the loss of color coding is if I try something like f of 4, it can evaluate for any value I need to. Or if I want a table of values, I can click the graph, I can do the gear and change it to a table, and it will give me a table of values for the entire piecewise function. And once again, if I want to add to the table, I can just type in an additional number or numbers, and that is handy to have everything all rolled into one, both because it gives you a table and because it will evaluate. I hope this helps you understand some things you can do with Desmos, and uh, please let me know if you have any questions.